You may be seated. Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Welcome in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. We are here today in person, and many of you on Zoom or on the internet, because of our love for Alan Baskey and for one another. We are here today to share our grief, and we share this love and grief with one another, but also with God. For Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. God also loves Al. God has now stooped down and taken Al into his rest, until the day of resurrection. But we who are here look today to Jesus Christ, who in his death defeated death. And so too did Al join Jesus in this victory over death. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Please join me in prayer. Merciful and loving Heavenly Father, we come before you into your presence with a mix of grief and thanks. Draw close to us, we pray, and give us assurance of your compassion and your presence with us. We bring to you all that's going on in our hearts and minds, our feelings, our questions, our memories, and we ask for your blessing and your peace. Come among us in this hour through your Holy Spirit. We lift up to you any regrets we may have regarding our relationship with Alan for lost opportunities, words we fail to say or words we fail to take back, We seek for your forgiveness and a sense of peace as we say farewell to Alan for the moment. And we ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. One thing I loved about Al was when he stood and when he sang. He sang with his heart, he sang with his mind, and he sang with his face, and he sang with enthusiasm. Let us stand together as you are able, and let us use our hearts and our minds to sing as wholeheartedly as Al did. Let's stand together. 297. I 
I'd love to tell the story, tis pleasant to repeat. What seeds each time I tell it, more wonderfully sweet. I love to tell the story, for some have never heard the message of salvation from God's own holy word. I love to tell the story, twill be my theme in glory, to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I'd love to tell the story for those who know it best. In hungering and thirsting to hear it like the rest. And when it sings of glory, I sing the new, new song. Twill be the old, old story that I have loved so long. I love to tell the story. Twill be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Please be seated. Now, Danielle, we invite Danielle Baskey, Alan's granddaughter, to share the eulogy with us. Alan Baskey was born in 1937 on the 21st of February in Lee, Saskatchewan, to his parents, Gordon and Irene. Later on, they moved to Kipling in 1952 and started working on the farm for many years. He soon met a soon-to-be wife of 56 years, Eva, in Fillmore in 1963, and two years later got married and had three wonderful children, Stephen, Darla, and Gail, and later on would have six grandchildren and one great-grandchild. In 1965, they moved to Regina, and that's where the family started. Alan was a very creative handyman, like attaching a dryer hose to the car to make sure the windows would not fog up when going to a hockey tournament. One of the family's favorite stories was in Alan's younger years, he played in a family band, which they performed at an amateur hour contest and they won first place. From winning first place, they were offered the chance to play in front of Princess Margaret. Alan spent his days tending to his plants and watching his children and grandchildren do the things they loved. From soccer to singing, he went and saw it all. He was also a singer in the male voice choir and the church choir, all the way till the end, and loved playing the accordion. On many nights, he would turn on the polka party and play his accordion and sing along. Alan was a very involved in his church work at the Baptist Church. He would attend weekly. He could start a conversation with anyone and bring a smile to their face with his funny jokes. He loved telling stories and could talk for hours on end. Alan loved his family with his whole heart, and we will miss him. Love you, Grandpa. Jesus is my portion, 
my constant friend is he. Oh, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Oh, his eye is on step I may have. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Oh, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know Watches me. I sing because I'm happy. Oh, I sing because I'm free. Oh, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know. Watches me, and his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. you to turn your hymn books to 539 and once again stand as you are able. Oh, that will be glory to me, 539. will be there I have loved long ago 
joy like a river around me will flow. Yet just a smile from my Savior I know will through the ages be glory for me. All that will be glory for me, glory for me, glory for me, when by his grace I shall look on his face. That will be glory, be glory for me. Thank you. Please be seated. Family has chosen two scripture lessons for us. The first from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Amen. The second lesson they've chosen for us is from Paul's first letter to the, third, the church in Thessalonica, beginning in chapter 4, verse 13. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do, who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring him with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. And then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And we will be with the Lord forever. Encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Joel. I'm one of the ministers here at this church, and it was my pleasure to know Al for almost 15 years now. We shared many interests in common. As I was saying to the family, he and I were often the last ones out the door while our wives tapped their foots waiting for us. Al's family chose Psalm 23, a beautiful, well-known psalm, a psalm that describes not just one moment in life, but a way of living. Not just an awareness that God is with you in happy moments or an awareness that God is with you in crisis, but an awareness that God walks with you every day of life. For the person who wrote this psalm, God is always present. You are with me. It's hard for me to imagine Al spending much time questioning that there is a God that God is present, that God is good. It seems to me that Al 
just lived it. God, you lead me. God, you restore me. God, you are with me. I look around me, God. Goodness and mercy are with me every day of my life. And I live with you, and I will forever. I don't think these were decisions that Al grappled with. It was a part of life that he had been given and a part of a life that he chose to live out. That was just how one lives. You pray, you join your church, you work, you enjoy the good gifts around you, people, gardens, and music, and you treat others well and you care for them. There's a sense in which I feel that Al lived this way, but also invited me to live that way also. Eva, I get the picture that Al was always inviting you everywhere as well. You were his constant companion, always together. He always wanted you at his side. I've run into the two of you in many places, always somewhere new, grocery stores, the mall. I remember going to see my sons play hockey at the cooperators, and there you and Al were. I said, well, who are you here to see? And they said, well, no one. <laughs> Your granddaughters aren't playing? No, we just thought we'd come down and see what was going on. In my alley? <laughs> oh, we were just driving by. <laughs> and I imagine Al saying to you over and over again, why don't we go see so-and-so? Oh, why don't we go to that concert? Hey, why don't we go to the mall? In Al's humble, direct, gentle way, I felt that the way Al lived was an invitation to me to, in, to live his good way of life. Not by argument, not by coercion, not with judgment. Just a simple invitation. Oh, you should come. You'd like it. I was excited to show him my garden. Excited to see his. I had to keep making mine bigger because his was so productive. And I want to spend more time now as a musician, playing music with others. I want to simply trust God, like Al did. I want it to be easy for me to be patient and good and gentle with all the people in my life, all the people I run into. I don't know what Al struggled with. I sometimes wonder if he struggled with anything. I know he didn't like his physiotherapy after his so so shoulder surgery. I remember going to visit him and asking, so how's it going? And he was saying, you tell him, Alan. <laughs> and then Alan queried quickly, putting his arm up down. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. <laughs> but I don't think Al needed to be driven by rules. I don't think Alan was driven by duty. I don't think Alan had to wrestle against his will to do the right thing. For me, Alan was a picture of a kind of freedom, of peace, Contentment, goodness, faith in God, lived out day by day. His, the words that come to me as I think of Al were Paul's, from Paul's letter in the Galatians. Paul wrote, You were called to freedom, but do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence. But through love, become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in one command. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. This is a picture that Al lived out, a kind of life 
a good life, well worth living. Al always seemed to enjoy so much of life. It was hard these last two years to see and to imagine the impact the restrictions were having on him. It was hard to see the impact your back pain was having on him and on you. The trouble his shoulder was giving him. Al was an active man, and his favorite activity, as we all know, was people. I'll probably get the story wrong, but Eva sent him out to get milk or cream, sour cream for supper that he wanted. He was always clear. What are we going to have for supper? That's not what he asked you first thing in the morning. What are we going to have for supper? And then whatever it was, oh, that sounds good. <laughs> he always told me, I'm trying to lose weight, but Eva's cooking is just too good. <laughs> We've come to resemble each other more and more, actually, he and I. But he was sent out for sour cream, I think, for this meal that he'd asked for. And he, minutes went by, and then an hour went by, and finally he came back. What took you so long? Well, I met this man in the grocery store. Where's the sour cream? Oh, I forgot it. Al <laughs> delighted in people. Al delighted in his mother in the years that I knew him. Many Sundays, he would tell me about the conversations he had with his mother. He delighted in his grandchildren and his grandson. I heard so much about each of you. You almost eclipsed your parents. I sometimes wondered if he had children of his own or just grandkids. He talked about you guys so much. He delighted in you. But he delighted in you, Darla and Gail and Stephen. He was, and now that I've come to know you myself a little bit over these last few weeks, I can see why he was so proud of you. Al loved his family, beyond just his immediate family. I heard the stories of his brothers, his cousins, his aunts and uncles, about the music, about the work, about the meals together. But Al also delighted the people he would meet in the alley or in the store. Even maybe people who were giving him a hard time seemed like he had a hard time himself hanging on to grudges. Al cared for people, but now he isn't here to say, hey, let's go out. You should come. Al loved music, polka music, gospel music. He loved his choirs. He loved his pianist and the men's male, the male uh, voice choir, Krista, on piano. Oh boy, is she ever good. He loved John's voice, or John Nelson. Oh, you've got a real nice voice, John. But now Al's instruments will be quiet. And our church choir is diminished. Al loved gardening. He loved showing me how much more fruit and vegetables were coming out of his. Uh, he didn't really. They were, always were, though. But perhaps now his garden will lie fallow. Death and illness can lead us to question the point of it all. Why keep living a good life? And so the family also thankfully chose First Thessalonians, the trumpet will sound, and the Lord will descend, and the dead will be raised. There is a day that is coming, and a new music will begin. A new choir will be formed, a new garden will be planted, and new neighborhoods will come together. All of nature and all humanity are longing for this day. People like Al reveal to all of us and to anyone who has eyes and ears what this new day will look like, 
what it will be to live with Jesus here in the new creation. Al will not come back to us, but one day we will go to him. Until that day, Al's invitation to us remains open. Come, come live this way. Work, prayer, church, music, gardens, family, friends. God is with you. God is good. Thanks be to God. Amen. Would you join me now in a word of prayer? Divine Presence, author of life, giver of all good things, we offer you thanks for the life and memory of Alan Baskey. We give thanks that his life touched ours and for the difference that that has made to each of us. We thank you, God, for Al's good nature his love of music, his passioning, passion for gardening, farming, and most of all, for people. Al was a delight to so many. We thank you for the good news of the resurrection, the confidence that one day we can be with Al, with you, in perfect health, peace, and fullness of joy. But Lord God, we come also with sorrow. So we wholeheartedly ask now that you would reach out and touch those who feel Alan's loss most keenly. Be with Eva as she grieves the loss of her beloved husband and seeks to find ways to navigate life in his absence. And Lord, we ask that you would comfort each of Al's children, Gail, Darla, and Stephen, as well as their partners, Eric, Scott, and Jacqueline. Oh Lord, may your comfort be real to each of Al's grandchildren, as well as to his great-grandchild. We lift up also Al's four siblings and their partners, Victor and Karen, Gordon and Doris, Ed and Lori, and Donna as well as friends and family who we have not named, you know each one's loss. You know the grief that each is experiencing. And so, Lord, we ask that you would touch us now with your peace, O Lord. Answer our weakness with your strength, our despair with your hope, our grief with your comfort. Hear our prayers, O Lord, those spoken quietly here today, as well as those aloud. And answer us, Lord, as we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For 35 years, I had the privilege of being a member of the pastoral staff here in this church. And for 35 years, one of the treasures of my ministry responsibility was directing the choir. And Al was a dedicated, faithful, friendly, loving individual who loved to talk your ear off. But he was a dear friend. He was so encouraging of our young musicians. And when I conveyed his passing to my daughter, who had played piano many times, my daughter said, Oh, 
Dad. She said, I really loved him. He was a wonderful person. And he believed in the amazing grace and love of his Lord and Savior. And so today, in the midst of the grief, we want to celebrate his life well lived. Let us stand together as you are able and sing Amazing Grace 202. Now we commit Al's body to the earth and we commit his soul into God's care until the day of resurrection. May the peace of Jesus Christ be with each of you. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Amen. Oh,